All right, so step one is just blow bubbles into the liquid. And you want to keep the rate and the height of the bubbles the same, whether you're doing voiceless or voiced contrasts. Listen once. Right, so I'm not increasing the bubbles when I add the voice. I'm not creating what I like to call volcanoes. Watch. If you are splashing yourself, you're creating volcanoes and that is not allowed. No volcanoes. Otherwise, game over. No Broadway for you. All right, what's the point of that? The point is to show that you can keep the airflow the same regardless of whether you're voicing or you're not. You're not adding any undue tension just because you're voicing, okay? It's actually harder than it looks. So once you master that, then proceed to step two. Okay, step two. So then you wanna create little hills and valleys with your voice. So you're gonna add different pitch ranges, slowly extending your voice up, like this. And once again, just because I'm going to increase the pitch doesn't mean I have to blow more air. So watch out for volcanoes again. Let me make some volcanoes here. No, 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 no. Oh, hell no. So you want to keep those bubbles the same rate and the height regardless of the pitch. Try this. Nice and easy. So the goal is to be easy on your voice. After you've mastered that, then you can move on to the next step. So now I want to pull the straw slightly above the water. We're not gonna do bubbles anymore, but we're gonna look for ripples. So if you take your straw, you'll be able to see a little indentation in the top of the water. Now you wanna make sure that you're not cutting off the airflow as you go to higher pitches. So not this. Where I'm adding effort in my throat. <clears> throat> you should be keeping the ripples and keeping that sense of a kazoo sound in your voice. And once you've mastered the ripples, then you can proceed to the next step. So now you want to take the straw completely out of the cup, and we're going to see if you can still keep the airflow without the visual reference point or the resistance of the water. So the way you can ensure that you're still keeping the airflow going is by taking a piece of paper in front of the straw. If the paper isn't going anywhere, you're probably cutting off the airflow like this. What you wanna see is this. If you don't have a piece of paper, you can just use your hand. You wanna feel the airflow on your hand the whole time. Once you've mastered adding the airflow just on the straw, we're gonna slowly fade away the straw in the next step. So for this next step, you're gonna slowly pull the straw away from your lips and still just use it as an auditory reference point to see if you're still keeping the airflow going. So you should still hear the noise blowing through the straw like this. If you hear this, if you don't hear it in the straw, you're probably cutting off the airflow in your throat. You're looking for the sound that's gonna make the straw almost like a kazoo. And once you've mastered that, you can take the straw totally away in the next step. So in the final step, you wanna see if you can emulate that amount of airflow and ease that you have through all the previous progressions without the straw. So it'll sound like this. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. 
Again, ensuring that you're keeping the airflow moving with the same amount of ease on high pitches and low pitches, whether you're loud or you're soft. Now, if you are sick or swollen or you have some allergies, you might need to live longer at some of the earlier steps. But once you get familiar with this exercise, you can jump right to the end where you're just doing this modified VW sound. That's where you can start your warm ups. You're gonna use this as the beginning of your journey into semi occluded vocal tracks before you get into lip trills, fricatives, nasals, etc. So good luck with playing with straws.